वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज अलोक पांडे एंड आई टीच एंथ्रोपोलॉजी एट द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद एंड वी विल बी लर्निंग अब द मॉड्यूल ग्रास रूट वीमेंस एक्टिविज्म विच इज रिटन बाय डॉक्टर कले सेल्वी एंड दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द कोर्स वीमेन इन हिस्ट्री विच इज पार्ट ऑफ वीमेन स्टडीज इन दिस कोर्स वी विल लर्न अबाउट the role of women in grassroots activism we will we will focus on social movements pertaining to pre independent and post independent india we will learn about the various areas of social injustice and social inequalities towards women the lessons will also highlight the various social movements addressing diverse social issues pertaining to different regions of india Uh, in pre-independence period, middle-class women initiated associations, which were linked to organizations in the West, and participated in social reform movements. During freedom struggle, grassroots women participated in nationalist movements against British rule at different levels. In the British period, a few legal measures were taken to eliminate social evils against women. Post-independence period. contextual based grassroots women movements have emerged and challenged gender disparity in all walks of life uh, initially in the indian context women's leadership in the national phase emerged from a small section of urban educated middle class who were influenced by western liberal democratic values in the 19th century the middle class women with the support of male social reformers initiated the process to fight against various problems pertaining to women which included female infanticide sati child marriage widow remarriage and segregation of women from all public life how do we understand women in the freedom struggle women shouldered critical responsibilities in india's struggle for freedom they held public meetings organized picketing of shops selling foreign alcohol and articles sold khadi and actively participated in the national movement grassroots women provided shelter food and carried messages played an active role in the nationalist movement in understanding movements and this categorization that we have made between pre independent and uh, independent and post independent period what we need to understand is that in the pre independent period of the social movements women played a very important role but in most instances these movements were either backed by men or led by men so in this though women played a role they were primarily emphasizing on the idea of social reform bringing about changes in society or on the status of women but in the context of the post independent movements we see the women emerging more strongly and in the center of these movements and the women were demanding gender inequality or the equality with men and the women which belong to the grassroots level had a very very central role in demanding for gender equality now this distinction is important because in the post independent period and during the independence period what we see is the coming of women in the center of these movements is very very important to understand where women come forward and take the movement in their hands and seek for equalities in the context of society so these movements what we see is the role of women stronger in the context of social movements in post independent era and these movements or social movements are addressing various social domains of society where women have a very important role to play and by demanding certain rights women are emphasizing the place in society and the role of women in society the rani of jhansi regiment this was led by captain lakshmi sahgal rani of jhansi 
regiment in Indian National Army was raised in July 1943 with 170 women volunteers from the expatriate Indian population in South Asia to fight against British colonial rule. The Women Movements in Modern Times Women actively participated in various movements such as peasant movements, ecological movements, trade union movements, women rights movements and other social movements. In this process, women critically analyzed gender roles and claimed their gender rights apart from social issues in general. What we see is primarily the pre-independence movements where social reform or social reform led movements that were primarily backed by men. But in the post-independent era, movements demanded gender equality involving grassroots women at various levels of society. Let's look at each movement one by one. The first is the Tebhaga movement. The Tebhaga movement began in 1946 in Bengal. It was against the feudal landlords to protect the rights of sharecroppers. The landless poor peasant women formed fighting troops called Nari Bahini and acquired a front rank role in defending their rights. Peasant movements in Andhra. The Telangana movement was a peasants militant movement in Telangana which emerged from Andhra Pradesh for land rights from feudal lords in 1946. The central focus of the movement was the liberation of women from the subjugation of violence. The Bodh Gaya peasant movement won Bihar. In 1978, the Bodh Gaya land movement was probably the first land struggle in South Asia in which women land interests were taken into account and carried forward with success. Women's participation in the struggle was recognized by the men due to the growing solidarity among women and the articulation of the gender-specific interests. Women got equal rights on the land released from mud. The Bodh Gaya movement initiated a process in which women were both subjects of change and agents of change. The Sahada tribal peasant movement in Maharashtra. The Sahada agitation in Maharashtra Dhulia district in 1972 is a significant pre-emergency movement. It was initiated by disinherited tribal peasantry whose lands have been appro appropriated by settlers from outside. Formation of the Shramik Sangathana in the 1970s of the Bheel tribal landless laborers against the exploitative landlords was triggered off after the rape of two Bheel women. The problem of family violence wife beating and alcoholism became issues of grave concern around this time and the strategy of retaliation was adopted by women. What we see in the context of the Tebhaga movement, the peasant movements in Andhra Pradesh, the movements in Bodh Gaya, the Sahada tribal movement in Maharashtra, they were all movements addressing issues of land and are primarily peasant movements which involve women. Let's turn towards some other kinds of movements, primarily the Chipko movement. Chipko movement was started in 1970s in Uttarakhand. It was a non-violent movement aimed at protection and conservation of trees and forests from being destroyed. Local village women literally hugged trees, interposing their bodies between the trees and the loggers to prevent the trees from being cut. Ganga Mukti movement in Bihar. In 1980s, this movement has been waging non-violent battle against monopoly of water lords over Ganga water and for acquiring fishing rights. Women played an active role and succeeded in getting fishing rights. The fisherwomen asserted themselves and secured more than 50% of seats in the committee which was conducting the movement and gained control of the fund collected for the movement. And this was a movement that called for factories to stop polluting the Ganges river. Women in the Narmada Bachao Andolan which was in Gujarat 
It is against the Sardar Sarovar Dam being built across the Narmada River in Gujarat in 1987. It originally focused on the environmental related issues related to trees that would be submerged under the dam water. Women played an equal role on par with men in defending their rights in this movement. The Apiko movement in Karnataka. This is a 24 year old movement with a need to conserve sensitive ecospheres in Karnataka. In 1983, the villagers in Sirsi Taluka of North Kanara district launched an Embrace the Tree campaign, which is very similar to the Chipko movement. Women participated actively in agitation and stopped the cutting of trees by embracing them. But what we see in both these movements, the Epico and Chipko, is that women played a very, very significant role in these movements. So what we see is in the movements of Chipko, the Ganga Mukti, the Narmada Bachao Andolan and the Epico movement, though primarily women had a major role in these movements, that they are ecological movements. And these movements become very, very important because they are not only linked to the environment, but they also had a bearing on the environment, the resources of the environment and also livelihoods of women and people. Now let's look at another movements which are in the context of trade unions, the Nipani movements. In 1980, women from Kerala fought against the mechanization of breedy production. Women demanded for job security, raised income and put an end to sexual harassment in the workplace. The sheer size of Women membership exerts a pressure on the union to take up trade union and social issues, issues that focus on women. From the Nipani struggle, an attack on social practices that oppress women such as the Devdasi system has emerged. The Chhattisgarh Dali Rajra mine workers. In manual mines of Chhattisgarh, women constitute almost half the workforce. In 1979, women workers not only fought for better working conditions such as wage increase, fixed working hours, but also practically eliminated the sexual violation of women by contractors and the henchmen in Dali Rajhara mines. Anti-liquor campaigns was effectively implemented with the help of women. Now let us look at the Self-Employed Women's Association, also known as SEVA. In 1972, a women's trade union movement, namely the Self-Employed Women's Association or SEVA in Ahmedabad was led by Ela Bhatt. Women involved in various trades in the informal sector were brought together by the shared experience and learned collective bargaining to defend their rights. Women's right movements between 1997 and 1979, new women's groups emerged in the cities like Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Bombay, Ahmedabad, Patna and Madras. They organized protest actions against dowry murders, beauty contests, sexist portrayal of women in media, pornographic films and literature imported from abroad, the introduction of virginity tests by the UK immigration authorities, custodial rape and pitiable conditions of women in prison. Then we see the nationwide anti-rape campaign. The nationwide Anti-rape campaign in 1980 resulted into the emergence and proliferation of the autonomous women's organization in several cities and towns of India. In 2012, women in Delhi protested against the gang rape of Nirbhaya, the Gulabi gang of Uttar Pradesh. Gulabi gang, known as Pink Army, was founded by Sampat Pal Devi in 2006 at Bundel Khand in Uttar Pradesh. Wrapped in bright pink saris, the women are often seen protesting against patriarchal culture, rigid caste divisions, female illiteracy and domestic violence. They also fought against child labour as well as dowry demands. The Vachati case of Tamil Nadu. Vachati is a Dalit dominated village situated in Dharmapuri district of Tamil Nadu. In 1992, a team comprising forest personnel and policemen under the pretext of conducting a search for smuggled sandalwood ransacked the village's property and raped 18 women. 
nearly two decades after the culprits were convicted from one to ten years for atrocities on tribal women. Social movements, the Navanirman. The Navanirman movement of 1974, which began as a student movement in Gujarat, was chiefly against corruption. Influenced by concept of revolution, the movement critiqued the caste system and religious rituals. Besides involvement in political and economic issues, it was also concerned with those that were considered private, such as family violence, domestic roles, and challenged patriarchal stereotypes. Anti Prize Rise Movement In 1972, women in Maharashtra from various levels formed a united front called Anti Prize Women's Committee and organized direct action against the culprits who created man-made scarcity of essential goods. Thousands of poor and lower middle class women joined the struggle under the leadership of Mrinal Gore, Ahilya Ranganekar, Manju Gandhi and Tara Reddy. anti arak Movement In Andhra Pradesh, the anti arak Movement was strong in 1992 to 93 and it spread into other states at different levels. More than 40,000 women uniting and blocking the Arik auction in Andhra was an historic chapter in the Indian women's movement. Women's activism in local governance. India's 73rd amendment provides 33% reservation for women in all the three tiers of local governance. In 2009, the percentage is enhanced to 50% in few states. First generation women who entered into politics without any political background also strive hard to establish themselves in public spaces. Though proxy pol politics exist, a few women could able to ascertain their position and showed tremendous changes in Panchayati Raj system in collaboration with women collectives that self-help groups at the Panchayat level. In this module, uh, women's grassroots activism, what we learned is we saw the role of women in various movements. We addressed certain movements which are related to the pre-independence era and the independence era. What we saw that most of these movements were trying to address different problems related to society and particularly in the context of women. And each movement tried to address problems of women and resolve these issues related to women's problems. Each movement addressed a certain domain of society, like the Chipko movement or the Apiko movement. These movements were ecological movements and which saw a predominant role of women in dealing with ecological problems. Women participated in protecting the environment by hugging trees or we saw women fighting for gender, equal, gender equality at the workplace fighting for women's rights. So what we learned from this is that women have played a very, very significant role at the grassroots level in addressing inequalities and rights. Though most of these movements and the role of women have been invisible in the domain of society and public because they were primarily documented by men in the, in the pre-independence era. But slowly, scholarship is highlighting the role of women and the movements they have participated in emphasizing a stronger presence, equality and fighting for justice for women. And understanding the grassroots activism and the role of women helps us understand the different contribution of different genders played in the betterment of society. So to conclude, what we see is that the movements that were documented in the pre-independence era and the movements that related to it were primarily invisible because they were documented by patriarchal documented history. In other words, they're primarily maybe written by men and were centered around the role of men. What is required is that there has to be conscious effort 
made by scholars to document and archive grassroots women's activism. Otherwise, the part will be invisible and neglected in the context of mainstream history. For further reference and reading, please visit the ePartshala website. Thank you.